What's up, everybody, and welcome to Clown Live! It is Friday. It is 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am your host, Dragon Blaker. You may call me Blake. You can call me whatever you like. And you are watching an Amazon Live interactive shopping experience presented to you by Shopping Dragons. What up, though? Like I said, I am your host, Dragon Blaker. You can call me Blake. How's been the last day? We didn't get to do a show yesterday. Everything was crazy. We It's been an extremely, extremely mild uh, winter where I live, and there has been like no snow, nothing to speak of really, no accumulation. Everything's been just like a drab, warm fall, really. Anyway, we had freezing rain falling, and uh, we have old maple trees behind the house, my house, and my neighbor's house. Hey, you can follow me today, Obsbot. Let me open up my Obsbot software, okay? Thanks for the reminder. But yeah, so I've got these maple trees behind my house, and this flash rain, this rain came in, and then this flash freezing occurred, and the trees got so heavy that they were like bowing down uh they were bowing down they were bowing down some of them a, a lot of them were bowing so much that they snapped under the weight of the ice on the branches so um i actually had branches snap off my tree that's what i'm saying my neighbor's tree as well and we live very close to each other so the branch on their tree fell on my house the branch fell on my house <clears throat> not a big fan okay of that so i went out there to assess the situation and uh like it was uh it was dangerous enough you know because all the ice was melting off the trees and was like falling in large pieces um so you know you could there, there was the potential to be struck right so a little dangerous and uh yeah but it didn't prevent me from going out there and uh moving the large branch off of the house not slid off the house pretty easily and thankfully from my vantage point there was no major um uh damage done to the house no damage done to the house what's up rover and uh yeah so no damage done to the house but a branch did fall on it uh during the night on wednesday night um or maybe late in the morning on thursday morning so anyway cutting to the chase uh the power went out at 7 a.m. and it was out here for 12 hours. Now, that was the basically the entire town the power was out. But um, ours was out here for about 12 hours, 12 and a half hours. And then it came on, thankfully. Um, and then my mom, she only lives five minutes driving away from me. Her power was out. Uh, 
still later in the evening, we went out and checked on her later in the night after our power came on and uh, her power was still off, but we had a big generator there for her. So everything was good. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rover, uh, fun indeed. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, uh, the, the rainstorm came It froze over all the trees, all the trees, all over town started snapping branches bigger than my legs were snapping off of trees and uh, there's just tree rubbish all over the town. So they are sending wood chippers through to take care of the job as they need to. Try three weeks, no power. Well, no thanks. Um, I would, you know what I thought? Here's the thing. What I thought was when the power was out for 12 hours, uh, I'm like, you know, I don't have any preparedness. That's what I thought. You know, if I, if I wanted to be warm right now, how could I achieve that without electricity? And, uh, and I didn't have an answer. I didn't have an answer at that time. Now we got like lighters and it wasn't a dire emergency situation. So I wasn't thinking that far into it, but, uh, yeah, I definitely, after having the power for 12 hours, uh, in February, it was still cold, you know, like it was freezing rain outside. <clears throat> um, but yeah, everybody here is okay, Mima and I, and, uh, I pulled the large branch off of the house and it slid onto the shed. The shed was already previously damaged, so I don't appreciate its valuable consideration, you know, in regard to potentially protecting the house. I'm not really certain, but I pulled the big branch off and it fell onto the shed. I don't think it caused any further damage to the shed, but there it lies. There it lies. So several, several branches bent at 90 degrees and just falling down off the trees. And that other one is stuck until they come around. And uh, I didn't have it the worst. I was fortunate to be able to pull that branch off and, uh, and now just wait patiently for the, uh, the public workers to come here and take care of the mess. So very fortunate, very fortunate situation. Now, you know, what is really funny is I can be often ill-prepared. I can be often ill-prepared. So when the power went out at 7 a.m., it woke us up because a few things beeped and we're like, oh, the power went out, whatever. We'll wake up and figure it out. Well, no, right. We woke up and the power didn't come on. Like I said, already for 12 hours plus. And uh, yeah, so my River 2 was not charged. My phone, it was completely not charged. Uh, the only things that I had for power here were um, the EF EcoFlow camping light. We're going to talk about it today because it truly is a lifesaver. I mean, not truly a lifesaver, but it could be. I see the value in how it could be a lifesaver. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like the Tribit. The Tribit speaker, it's just kind of uh, the camera's following me. But the Tribit speaker and, and some of the anchor speakers that I got that had some charge in them could have provided battery in an emergency situation. So anyway, carrying on with my little story here, um, I, I wasn't too worried. I couldn't stream. So I was like, well, it, it's dark and there's nothing to do at this moment. So I think I'll take a little nap. So I slept through some of it. And then when I woke up, it was maybe like 7 p.m. It had been about now, 12 hours, the power out. And I'm like, all right, well, I got nothing to do. I'm not very, very cold, but I can feel my tips of my fingers and my nose is a little bit cold. N not even anything to be concerned about. Put on a jacket in the house. You know what I mean? But... uh my buddy hit me up and was like, Hey, do you got like enough to, do you got enough to keep you warm? Not just extra blankets. And I'm like, no, not at all. I got nothing like that. Um, so, and I was like, Oh, just like to be able to sit in the truck and let it idle and take the heat from the truck, you know, or drive around or whatever. And then I realized that my wife's car is in the driveway. It hasn't been running on the road, but it still starts. You know what I mean? So I woke up, I felt a little cold. I took my Bluetooth speaker and I took my River 2 out to the car and I plugged it into the car's auxiliary power port, the cigarette lighter adapter. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, I like the moment 
I plugged it in. There was like this flash outside the car window and I, I didn't know, I didn't realize what it was. And then it flashed again. And then, yeah, the power came back on. Finally. That's my long winded story. It's my long winded story. I went out to the car. As soon as I got settled in there, the power came on. Like the moment I started charging the river too, the power came back on. So that was fortunate. Came in, charged the river too immediately. And then uh, today, Power's been on for me for over 12 hours. Went uptown today. I was conducting some business. And the place that I went to, uh, I was it was not a restaurant. I was in sir, drive-through service. And uh, the power went out there just while we were talking, as a matter of fact. So, uh, yeah, very, very crazy. Uh, power outages here with the ice. But, and in conclusion, um, all that ice fell on Wednesday night. By Thursday night, like, it was mostly melted. And all the trees had returned to their non-sagging, you know, original forms, uh, apart from the broken branches. And and the branches broke and they didn't snap off. So I got a lot of broken branches, but uh, I can't reach up to cut them without bringing the truck to the back, maybe. Uh, I don't know if I have a ladder, so I would just bring the truck back here. And the earth is a little bit wet. So that's my entire story. That's my story. We got two people watching out here today. Appreciate y'all joining me on this Friday episode of Clown Live. Let me bring in my second camera because we're going to get started here talking about products on the show. We've got 22 products today, all, all products on the table. We're going to talk about all, of, well, some of it is uh, outside. So actually we better pick up the pace before the sun starts going down. I forgot we got to go outside and talk about the smart drop. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> Three weeks, no power, huh? I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want that. In 2022, last summer, I went to a music festival and I had a, a lot of time to myself. So I literally went to the festival one week early and one week prior to the festival that I was attending, they had a little concert down in that area. And so uh, I ended up, that concert was at like nine, nine o'clock at night. I think they started opening the gates or maybe six o'clock at night. Doesn't matter. I showed up there at 9 a.m. on that day. And just, uh, and, and I was there right at the front gate for a couple hours. I was like the second one there, surprisingly. The first person there was also there for the festival that I wanted to attend one week later. And uh, yeah, so we pulled in there and then the guy that runs the place is really, really nice. And so we, uh, hey, what's up, Jacob? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. And also thanks for joining me here on this Friday show um, of Clown Live. I'm just talking about uh, power and how my power went out. I'll spare the whole long story, but we had an ice storm. Branches snapped. One hit my house. My power was out all day, so I didn't get to do the show yesterday. Now, here we are, wrapping up the week with a Friday show. I think we might do a show on the weekend. I'm not totally sure yet. If I do, it'll be, you know, tomorrow or Sunday, and it'll, it'll pop up. It'll pop up when we do it. I think I'm going to do one. I'm not really sure yet. haven't decided, but I'm really leaning on the do it side. Um, I won't be able to make it for the next two weeks. Oh, no, that's unfortunate. Well, I hope that whatever you're doing in lieu of not being able to watch the show is extremely fun and gratifying and fulfilling as well, okay? Because uh, to be distracted for two weeks sounds like you're going to be involved in something. So I hope it works out very well to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's my story. My house ran out of power and as soon as i plugged it as soon as i figured out how to charge my emergency battery the power came back on that's it uh so i really really want to get like a bigger battery and and some solar panels i can really see the advantage of it um you know here at my house uh we live like we don't always traditionally do like a week's worth of groceries. And it's very often that we might only do like a day or two or three days like tops. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we weren't really worried about anything like going bad in the fridge or anything like that. And we were very fortunate that the power was only out for 12 hours. All right. 
Oh, what is up, Mrs. Dragon Blogger? It's great to see you here. Thanks for also joining the show along with Rover and Jacob. We are just actually getting ready to jump into products right now. So you're here just in time to see me work it, girl. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to work it real good right now. Here we go. Okay, let's start today's show by talking about the Suntong dash camera, okay? So here's the box. Where are we reaching at here? It's a little bit of a stretch for the camera today. I'll fix that later. All right, so this is the Suntong dash cam. Pretty sweet little dash cam. It has a three-inch IPS screen. Now, this is not a touch screen. And when you turn the Suntong on, it... Um, it uh, <clears throat> It has these buttons that are on the side that act as multi-function buttons. So you have like long press or short press or double press. And you can learn about all the different functions for each of these buttons when you read the uh, instruction manual. Now, the manual that came with it, it's uh, I'd give it like a I'd give it like a seven. I'd give it like a seven and a half out of ten on on uh, translation into English. Some of the functions, it took me a minute. I had to reread the instructions several times. But uh, once you get the initial gist of how the Suntong camera works, it is pretty easy to, to navigate through the menus and whatnot. Uh, it does have a power button. Now, there's no demo with the power on today because the Suntong requires the ability to be plugged in. I mean, I guess we could plug it in. I haven't plugged it in, I think, but once on the show. Uh, where is I, – I would have to plug it into my River 2. I would have to plug it into the River 2. Why? Before I look for my battery. Uh, battery's got to be behind me. Um, is because the Suntong 1080p dash cam – only runs when your vehicle is running. So I have a I have a cigarette lighter or a power auxiliary port in the dash, like in my center console of my truck that is always on, always on. So when I plugged this in, it was always on whether I turned the vehicle on or off. And the moment that I applied power to this, <clears throat> it turned on and it started recording. Now, you can change the settings so that when it does auto on, that it doesn't start recording right away. But I, I, I don't see why you would need that feature. Um, I guess, whatever, situation specific. Uh, but yes. And then I found out that I did have another auxiliary port on in my center console that is activated only when I turn the key on on my vehicle. And I plugged my Suntong dash cam into that power port and, uh, and I turned my truck on and the camera didn't turn on. I think I have a bad fuse in my truck. So I think I have to replace the fuse in my truck. That's it. But regardless, whether it's turned on through power or direct power from an always on power source, once the Suntong receives power, it does turn on. It does start recording automatically. It says a G sensor is what they call it that is built into here. So that um, if the truck, if you're, I was going to say my truck, if your vehicle is, is hit, and that sensor is activated, then there's a very, very small battery in here that will automatically kick on and record for maybe like 20 seconds, I think 30 seconds max, and uh, and then it turns off. And that is really important to remember because you always have to have this powered by your vehicle when it's on. There's not a battery built into it that will just run for a block of time that blo there is. And that block of time is less than one minute. So when you stop the vehicle, it will auto off because the battery in it will die essentially. Okay. It has a really easy suction cup to mount to your window. Uh, it's really super simple to pop into place too. It just has this little uh, slot and you just put it in like really, really simple, very simple, very easy guys. That's my James. Okay. It's my James from dragon blogger. Make sure you're subbed to dragon blogger tech and entertainment. Um, okay, but like I was saying though about the suction cup, once you install it, very easy to do. There is a, just a little dial on the back and you just turn it. We can see that this little uh, portion of the dial moves. Uh, we can turn it back to release the suction cup. So really cool, uh, really simple, very easy guys, right? Oh, some really other great features about the Suntong camera that I want to tell you about before we move on from it is that it does come with a 32 gigabyte SD card um, that is already formatted. And generally when you receive the package installed, <clears throat> pardon me, in the in the dash cam, okay? It also comes with a little tool to remove the, uh, the, the card if you need that tool, but it is pretty easy just to push out and, uh, and remove, very simple. And then it also comes with a USB to micro SD card reader. So everything that you need to 
run the camera and get the data off the memory card on a regular kind of PC is really simple and included in the box. One final feature other than the microphones that are built into the Suntong that I want to tell you about is that I don't have it to show you today, but when you click through the carousel and navigate to the Suntong store, there is a reverse camera that you can also obtain uh, and it plugs right into this USB port on the top of the dash cam. Okay. Uh, and that's a lot of features. That's a lot of minutes here on the Sun Tongue. I think I covered pretty much all of it. Uh, if I was to talk any more into it, we would have to plug it in, turn it on, and really just start going through the menus. Um, but uh, maybe we'll save some of those details for another day. The Sun Tongue dash cam, like I said, 1080p screen that is three inches is $40 today. It's 20% off of a regular average retail value of 50 bucks. So from 50 to 40, save $10. Pretty good deal. Uh, we're using this when we think we need to use it. And the reality of the situation is that's stinking thinking. Oh, let's follow. Let's follow here. The reality of that situation is that that's just stinking thinking. This should be in the vehicle at all times. And then I should only be removing it from the vehicle on days that I know that I'm going to feature it on the show. Uh, because this is just a smart thing to have. You never know who's doing what, even if you have the ability to lose control. Uh, like specifically driving and getting into an accident, this is a great thing to have to record that situation. The unblinking eye never lies. You know what I'm saying? Unblinking eye never lies. This is a great, great thing to have in your vehicle. All right. Um, let me catch up on Jacob's uh, comments. I won't be here for two weeks. My wife had a heart attack as she passed away. Not so fun. Oh, I apologize. You know, I did encourage that. I hope that you're doing something fun and I hope that wasn't insensitive. Obviously, I didn't know that that was the uh, serious case. Um, when I was in my late 30s, I had a mild one and it hurt really bad. Uh, my wife died from a heart attack. Man, that's really, really sad, Jacob. I'm surprised that you can even take time to come and be on Amazon today, but I do appreciate that you come out and uh, let us know what's going on. Uh, Cause it's, um, I mean, it's very, very sensitive and it is the exact opposite direction of the mood that I was in about 10 seconds ago. So catching up on the news in the chat, I'm trying to be sympathetic while also uh, conduct the show. You understand? So yeah, I'm really, really sorry. Uh, it's, I hope that, uh, I, I hope that you have the ability to grieve as you need to and don't ever let anybody tell you that you haven't grieved enough, okay? If it's your wife and you love her, then never let anybody tell you, you know, that you haven't grieved enough. Uh, I think that's really important. Somebody said that to me once when somebody very close to me passed away uh, when I was in my 20s and I'm in my 40s now. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's really important. Um, wh uh, what's up, Ryan? I'm glad that you're here. Okay. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I redact my previous statement about wishing that you would have fun, but I do encourage you, as I said a moment ago to grieve as you must. Okay. Uh, there's never, you can never do the right amount of time of, of grieving. It's different for everybody. Okay, but with much due respect, Jacob, I'm going to keep conducting my show here, and uh, please feel free to stay in the chat. We can talk about whatever you like. I'm here for you, but I do have to talk about a few products. So uh, obviously, I understand you recognize that I'm not trying to be insensitive, okay? So let's move on now with our carousel. Go as you need. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate you. And uh, okay, so let's do that then. Let's keep going as we need, okay? All right, so the next product then in our carousel is going to be these Govi Lynx Dream Lights. Now, here's mine. They're in solid color green today. They've got a little remote control here, Kapow. It's uh, IPX5 water resistant. You can press the button here on this controller I'm holding, and the lights go off. You can press the button again, lights on, switches, buttons, pretty cool. Now, these go the outdoor lights that I'm showing you in this box certainly look like a hodgepodge of wires, doesn't it? But the reason being is because all these wires equate to a length of approximately 96 feet, okay? So this is 96 feet of outdoor string lights by Govi. And what you get here is two 48-foot lengths of 
outdoor string lights. Now these string lights are RGBIC um, and individually addressable with the Govi app. And as I was saying, it's two 48 foot lengths. So on each 48 foot length of the Govi outdoor string lights, uh, you get 15 IP65 weather resistant, shatterproof bulbs. These bulbs are made out of plastic. Now, <clears throat> I think if you stepped on it, you would probably crush it. So I haven't tried to do the crush test yet because I got them in October during uh, early access prime deals for an incredible deal. I got them for an incredible deal today with four and a half stars and just over uh, 2,200 ratings. They're available at full price for $99. And uh, the show is best deals. We're talking about the best deals. So today, not the best deal. But if you're looking for great outdoor lights, I can't recommend these Govi outdoor string lights enough because uh, even though I haven't used them practically, I have set them up uh, for one complete evening of enjoyment the entire 96 feet. And it stretches out really far. And the patterns uh, that you get installed in the app, which are called themes and scenes, uh, there's an abundance of them that are preloaded into the app as well as uh, you're given the ability in the Gobi app to create your own themes and scenes with, with 30 different RGB bulbs here. You can control over, with, over diff, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Gobi outdoor string lights bulbs, you have the ability to address each one its own individual color, ranging over 16.1 million colors, right? So like, you know, essentially you have infinity options. Now, like I said a moment ago as well, you get the themes and the scenes. When you join the Govi community, they upload a bunch of different themes and scenes. So even if you would maybe consider yourself not the most creative person for changing the colors of light bulbs, uh, there's a whole, whole community that exists that gives you even more options than what are defaulted in the Govi app when you download it for free on Google or iOS stores. Boom. I really love my lights. Pretty much every time I show them, I show them in, in solid green because I kind of use them in the box, in the house for other projects. And this is kind of like, I need the green light and this is kind of what where I'm at. <clears throat> Inside, and this is good for the Govi Outdoor. The Govi app is good for these Govi Outdoor string lights. They're also good for uh, pretty much every Govi product that is compatible with the app. So those themes and scenes that I was talking about a moment ago are compatible throughout the entire um, environment of, of products that Govi offers. These are the only Govi lights that I currently own, and I hope to get some more soon enough. Clickable coupon on the lights, 20 bucks. Sweet. So today making them 80 bucks, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good deal, $20 off. I've seen them on some really, really great deals, but a $20 clickable coupon is definitely a deal. And that's what we're all about here. Thank you very much, bud, one minute ago for letting me know that. Do do. I have those lights. I rigged them to my outdoor light switch. That's pretty good. I bet you could put them on like a little motion too. Now, the thing about plugging them in is that uh, – let me show you here. Where are we at? Okay. Here it is on the ground here. Okay. So the plug, the plug to start the 48 foot length is here at my hand. This is where the controller connects. So this is this is the full length of cable from the from the light to the controller. And then from the controller to the plug is equally as short. I've got it maxed out here in my hand. So uh so the controller is IPX5 water resistant. The plug is not water resistant at all. And uh, and the lights are IP65 water resistant. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily, they're not designed, I believe, to be left up permanently, but uh, you could leave them outside for a little bit, like, you know, maybe the weekend. But I don't know. Like, do you have them installed outside and do you have them? Out like uh, through the elements, how long do you leave them up? Do you leave them up permanently? I don't think that I would want to do that. Now, I'm talking a lot about the first two products today. We're going to pick up the pace here in just a minute. But I also want you to see that on the lights, okay, on the lights, there is a, a hook. Uh, let's see, where do I go? A long way. Okay. On the light, there is a hook, but the hook is not very flexible. 
So I think you're just kind of like sliding it onto a thin guide wire. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's all I wanted to show you about. And then the lights are pretty, pretty far spaced out. It's, there's a lot, there's a lot before I get to my next light. I think it's about two feet between each light. Um, what light do you have around the room? The light that I have, they're under the porch. The light that I have around the room is a product that I don't believe is available on um, Amazon currently, but I can take a quick look, but I think I have in the past. And, uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't really like, oh yes, but maybe I'm wrong because Amazon does have a lot of stuff, doesn't it? Let me see if I can find, uh, I'm trying to see if I can find this product that I, that I have on the walls here. It's not like a, I bought this not on Amazon, the lights, and it would be, I'm going to use a few less words. Let me try one more time. Yeah, I don't think that I'm going to be able to find it like super easy. I bought them from a different site and I bought them many, many years ago. And uh, yeah, I'm scrolling through a couple pages of options here and I just don't. I just don't see my particular product here. My what one gripe, one disadvantage to my product that I have on my walls here is that um uh, uh, each strip is 16 feet. Each strip is 16 feet. So you can see just above, uh, I'm trying to see just above the flag here. Uh, this is where 16 feet connects. And then as we come out into the living room, uh, there's another 16 feet that is right there, right above the pin. Yeah. I'm trying to have there, see right above the picture to on my other side here, right there right there so wrapping around the room here wrapping around the room is uh wrapping around the room it's 16 feet 16 feet 16 feet and then as you run uh the lines together the the electricity the power like dissipates so more complicated light scenes that are built into these strips they don't render properly you know and so I ended up just running a power cable for every 16 feet. Um, so, yeah, so mine doesn't look too, too bad because it's white ceiling with white cables and everything and self-adhesive backs. But uh, Govi lights are great, too, because they offer 16 and a half foot lengths like this. And they also offer uh, uh, lights that have more concentrated LEDs. I think these are 30 LEDs a meter. Um, and, and the majority of Govi products are also 30 LEDs a meter when we're talking about uh, strip lights like these. When we're talking about strip lights like above me here uh, that line the in, in, entire interior almost of my house. <clears throat> okay, so the Govi outdoor lights are available today for $100 then with a $20 off coupon. So scoop them up for 80 bucks today. I still have seen them on better deals, but uh, if you need to get the strip lights right now, uh, if you need to get these outdoor string lights right now, 80 bucks, pretty good. It's less than a dollar a light, which is a pretty good deal. Ooh. All right, let's move this out of our way. And let's grab the E1000s next. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about these gaming headphones here. These are the EXA E1000 7.1 simulated surround sound gaming headset. They have very thick cushioning on the headband here, as well as on the ear cups. They, I like that they're uh, black with white trim. And also aesthetically on these headphones, they have this RGB mode that uh, 
goes around the entire perimeter of the cup as well as the exa branding itself and that's on both the right and the left cup which does have the microphone included but it's not up to mute when you put these headphones on you'll see that it does have a braided nylon cable that features an inline volume and mute control. Uh, so that's how you mute your mic and control your volume inline. Now, the way that this device connects to your favorite products, uh, electronics, is via USB. So this gaming headset is more designed for like PC and PS4. Uh, I guess it's PlayStation. I'll say I'm, I got a PS4 here, not a PS5. But good on any anything that has a USB audio interface. The Exit E1000s is going to be a considerable choice. They offer really good noise isolation experience as well. When I put these on, I definitely hear everything get quieter around me. And, uh, oh, Michael Ray, hey, what's up? Thank you so much for joining the show today. You're watching Clown Live with me, your host, Dragon Blaker. You can call me Blake. And right now, we're taking a look at these Exa E1000 gaming headset. It's a seven, like I was saying, <clears throat> it's a 7.1 simulated surround sound experience with 50 millimeter drivers that are in these cups and a USB interface to connect to your PlayStation or Xbox or Nintendo or PC, for example. OK, uh, they are available. Been watching for a while, but never really talked. Well, Michael Ray, I thank you very kindly for watching for a while. That's amazing. I really, really appreciate the lurkers and the followers. And you've crossed a threshold you're now following, and that's amazing. So thank you so kindly. If you have any questions about anything, feel free. I mean, you you know, you've been here then. You know what's going on. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. If you got anything else that you'd like to talk about, feel free to bring it up in the chat. Uh, what's up, Stargazer? Thank you for coming out and hanging out with me here on Clown Live today. It's Friday. We are vibing. Everything's great, and we're just wrapping up, talking about what I think is a great budget-priced headset like i said 7.1 surround sound usb connection ultra comfortable uh cushioned headset with a rgb accent all of that for 32 dollars 99 so 33 dollars today for the exa e1000 and that is 18 percent off so it's a deal it's a deal uh regular 40 so save uh save seven bucks save seven bucks when you get the exa e1000 today all right. Okay, let's move on to another EXA product here. And we're going to talk about the EXA Telcom H1. Now, what this is, is it is noise-canceling trucker headset, okay? Now, this Bluetooth headset only features a single cup design, and that is uh, important when, I think, when you're a trucker and if you're out of your vehicle and you need your hands free. Like, if you're in a truck and you're on the side of the road, and you got a lot of like road noise on the side of a highway, for example, uh, using this trucker headset, the Exa Telcom H1 is definitely something worth considering. It's adjustable only on the side of the cup for uh, height purposes. And on the side where there's no cup, it does make an adjustment to grip onto your head uh uh, properly. This doesn't pinch when you wear this and the microphone is bi-directional. So it has uh, 270 degrees of motion. So whether you're wearing this on the right side or whether you put the microphone over on your left side, uh, easy to wear, easy to switch over. It has volume controls and a Bluetooth pairing button as well as a mute button right on the microphone. This is great. It has an algorithm that is designed to reduce road noise in order to produce a clear call to the person that you're speaking to. And the cup design does offer a little bit of noise isolation so that you can receive a clear call while still being aware of the things that are going on around you. All right. Now, the H1 today has a four star review with 90, 90 reviews. It's $90 today. Now, in the picture, I got to say this in the picture, um, uh, there's a USB dongle, but there's no USB dongle here. It's all straight Bluetooth. I tried to get more information about that Bluetooth dongle, and I just can't. I can't. Um, okay, one final thing about the $90 trucker Bluetooth headset by Exa today is that it offers over 100 feet of range, of wireless range. So you can leave your phone in your rig and still be able to go to the back of the truck of the trailer and open it and do what you need to do. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. All right. Now let's talk about the next product in my carousel. Oh, one final thing uh, as I'm over here packing up 
It also comes with a nice little cinch sack to keep your headphones clean and fresh and protected. But um, just from like dust, this is not waterproof or anything. <clears throat> All right, now let's talk about the Quintus. Today, we're just going to show it without the cable plugged into it, okay? And I'm definitely not having the ability to memorize all the stats of all the ports. So we're definitely going to take a look at the box today. But uh, yeah, so this is the Quintus 65 watt personal device charger. Uh, let me get that. This is the smart personal device charging station. This is the Quintus IntelliSense. This is Quintus IntelliSense. And what it does is it takes one plug from, from the wall and turns it into five USB plugs that charge your devices this doesn't run any data it's just a charging station it has two usb c ports on the on the top as well as three usb uh, two usb c ports on the top as well as three usb ports on the bottom okay so now i'm going to spit out a couple numbers real quick and this is this is the part where i gotta look at the box okay so we're gonna read it from the top usb c down to the bottom usb ports okay <clears throat> Okay, on the top USB-C port at max, it puts out 20 volts, three and a quarter amps at 65 watts. So that's where the Quintus 65 watt IntelliSense charger gets the majority of its power output is through the top USB-C connection. And like I said, that's at 20 volts at 65 watts max. And then on the USB-C 2 port, the one underneath it, let's pull this over. I can see how far I have to lean over. The second port, okay, second, third, fourth, fifth, okay, for reference. Okay, let's put this back in the middle. Okay, good. The second USB-C port puts out power up to 20 volts at one and a half amps at 30 watts max. And then the orange USB port in the center, that puts out 20 volts at one and a half amps at 30 watts max as well. So you can charge tablets and laptops with, the Quintus IntelliSense Smart PD Charger charging station. Now, for the bottom two USB ports, these are just like traditional, um, like cell phone data, cell phone power ports. These only put out a maximum of five volts, two amps, 10 watts max. So, the bottom two ports, they're going to charge your cell phones, and the, and the top ones are going to charge your tablets and your laptops. I use this, I was using this every single day for running power to the iPhone here that we use for, for uh, controlling the carousel. But uh, now I've got like things set up differently, so I don't need to use this as often. But I was using this every single day in my house. It comes with this little stand, and uh, it's cool because you can just take your cell phone when you're charging it, put your cell phone in the stand, and then it, it stays up leans against the thing just like that okay the quintus is available today for 35 dollars. it has a four and a half star rating with just over 400 reviews and i like this i like this a lot the quintus the quintus um smart pd charging station uh the the intellisense this is the intellisense is really great i love that you can charge laptops and cell phones and tablets with it and that it converts five plugs into one really simply and, and and like i showed you i just want to show you it does just easily remove from the stand so if you just want to lay it flat or whatever now one thing that i don't like and this is purely purely aesthetic uh, one i'll tell you two things that i dislike about the intellisense okay uh one is aesthetic and that's on the device it has a shiny side and it has a matte side and when you put it into the cradle uh the cradle it, it doesn't hold it very tightly the cradle doesn't hold it very tightly. So I wish that the cradle held the Quintus a little more tightly than what it does currently. And that that um, constantly moving it around uh, for me, because I, it's a high functioning device for me, like all over the house, not just sitting on a desktop, uh, moving it has scratched it all up and only on the part you can see. I know you can see that very clearly. So I wish that that didn't have to happen. But uh, beyond the aesthetic and that I wish the grip held a little bit tighter, an amazing, an amazing, an amazing charging station for $35.
Customer123, thank you so much for following me here on Clown Live. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's great to see a few follows coming in in January and February. Things have slowed down a little bit. So uh, it's absolutely wonderful to see you hit that follow button. I appreciate it so kindly. Thank you. And uh, what's up, Victoria Diaz? I hope that you're doing great. Thank you as well for joining me here on Clown Live. We're just wrapping up, talking about the Quintus IntelliSense uh, personal device smart charger. I like this thing. I'm just not using it every day right now because I got different options. But uh, this is great for if you got if you have power. This is great for camping. It's great for your desktop. Uh, I don't need to sell it any further. A really great device for a budget friendly thirty five dollars. All right, let's talk now about the pluggable microscope. Okay, the pluggable microscope is actually one that we don't have the uh, box for anymore. I've had this for a long, long time. And before we begin, I want you to know that what we're taking a look at with over 6,000 reviews and a four and a half star rating, this is available for 40 bucks today, and that's 33% off. So heads up on a great deal. This is microscope is regularly $60. Today, it's only $40, all right? Okay, what I love about the pluggable microscope is that it offers a fixed 250 times zoom so when you plug this in you only get one zoom 250 times if you want it closer push it down right <laughs> you gotta push it down if you want it closer okay on the front of the microscope on the front of the pluggable microscope um there's a little there's a little uh dial here that we can adjust for the LED brightness that is built in around the ring of the microscope. Also, the gray area here is your focus knob. This doesn't do any autofocus whatsoever. When you point it at something, you have to manually focus it. And the, the pluggable 250 time microscope does have a really good zoom um uh, excuse me not a good it does it let me start again it does excel at giving you a zoom that is 250 times the autofocus is very sensitive as well and easy to operate which allows you to take a look at different things without having to constantly move your specimen okay you can use this to look at soldering joints sometimes we use it on the show to take a look at how sharp knives are you can look at like i said at small electronics gem facets you can look at fingernails if you're doing cuticles you know what i'm saying uh whatever you need to see up close that you just can't see at 250 times zoom the pluggable 250 times zoom uh microscope definitely has you covered now, it comes with the, microsco the microscope itself. It comes uh, also with everything you need to mount to this included plate. And that's it. It plugs into a USB 2.0 port. And I know that if you click through the carousel, they offer different type of options with the pluggable. But they only, they only, they only remain at 250 times zoom, I believe. I, I went through the pluggable store like just the other day, try to see if they had any microscopes that zoomed in further. Maybe I did poor research. I should look again. But uh, they do offer the 250 times zoom with some different accessories. So if you're interested in that, absolutely click through the carousel to learn more. Uh, all right, Stargazer, I hope that you can feel better uh, soon. All right. And I think the last time you were feeling poorly eating steak ended up helping you feel better. Isn't that accurate? If you're still here from one minute ago, um, just eat a big old steak. You'll be fine. Okay. So who steak helps a stomach flu, right? All right. But in all honesty though, I hope that you stay very well and can, I hope that you can get well soon. All right. Um, I hate having a poor tummy feeling. It's the center of my being. And that makes me feel like, ugh. I haven't had a stomach flu in a while. Uh, thankfully, I must boast. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if you're still here and just waiting for me to say goodbye, then goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you can feel better soon. And uh, we'll be back on Monday. All right. So if you're feeling better Monday, come back and give me an update because I hate to know that you're feeling poorly. All right, let's move on from the pluggable now and let's talk about some Eufy products here. We're going to take a trip outside in just a minute. 
uh, after we talk about the doorbell. Here it is. It's like a little Easter egg hunt up here. Okay, let's pop this out of the box. The Eufy Security 1080p doorbell offers you a, a 1080p recording in a 4.3 aspect ratio. And it comes with everything that you need to install it from mounting brackets and plugs. This is the chime. This is the chime. It has little uh, little antennas on it that I think look like cute little hands. Because they don't go any more straight up. They just stay out at this Y position. Uh, okay, so this is your chime. And um, this is the doorbell. Excuse me. I just got a little bit of light hair in my eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, this is the 1080p doorbell by Eufy. Like I said, it is uh, offering a 1080p resolution and a 4.3 aspect ratio. This is your button. This is your camera. It sits in this cradle. Mine is currently in the cradle. And to remove it, you just pop a little pin right into this hole. And this pin is included in the kit. When you charge the Eufy 1080p doorbell, it's good for up to... 120 days of use. This features two-way voice, so you can communicate with the person that is outside. So you don't even have to get the door. You can check who's there right from your phone, okay? Uh, I like that feature a lot. Today, the 1080p UV security battery-operated doorbell, it's regularly $100, but they do have it on deal today. It's 20% off, making it 80 bucks. I think that's a really good deal myself, if I don't mind sharing my opinion. And I don't mind. Uh, yeah, this again is just another product that I'm really interested in installing. But I also see the merit in consistently showing it on the show. So even though I have all these great products, I find it more of an asset to me currently to show them on the show. But uh, I've got plans. I've got plans in life. I would like to add some more cameras all throughout the house. And I'd like to have the entire house be a studio. You know what I mean? So that I can just jump from one camera to another really easily. Putting them away is not always as easy. Putting things away is like, it's easier to mess things up than it is to put them away. Just like it's easier to get fat than it is to lose weight. At least I feel that way. I feel that way. I'm a larger man and I find it easier to eat a sandwich than walk around the block. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right thing to say, but it is true. All right. Now, though, we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the Anchor PowerConf C200. It's a really great little webcam that is available today from Anchor for $60. And uh, here's the box for the camera. This is what it looks like. Yeah, center it. And, um, yeah, this is what the box looks like. We're actually broadcasting the camera to you. The, the, I'm, excuse me, let me say that again. I'm using the Anchor Power Comp currently for camera two, for camera two. So it is, it, if we lean way forward, oh, I'm going to break my table. I got to be careful. If we lean way forward, here's the camera. Very small. It's a very small camera. It's uh, It connects via USB. Uh, C in the back to USB on your PC. I never hooked up a dual USB C cable to it i would assume that it would work but it does come included with a usb-c to usb cable that's uh that's relevant and it's available for sixty dollars it has a four and a half star rating with just over 1400 reviews this is a 2k resolution camera with that uh gives you that resolution up to 30 frames a second and when you download the anchor work software you can change its def you can change its field of view ranging from 65 all the way up to 95 degrees i think it just offers you one other field of view option in the middle there so you get three field of view ranges the anchor work software is easy to download it recognizes the camera right away the power conf the c200 here that we're taking a look at it has dual microphones built into it and it has the ability to close the lens so look at this when we close the lens it actually puts the camera to sleep. Well, let's close this all the way. It actually puts the camera to sleep, and it doesn't just put a shroud over the lens. Now, it does put a shroud over the lens, but <laughs> and that shroud is red in color. Uh, but when we open our, our lens uh, shroud, it just the camera turns right back on. Now, I, do, uh, I used to say that it muted the microphones, but I've later learned that's untrue. The microphones do not go mute when you shut the lens. So you get single layer 
privacy protection with the Anchor um, PowerConf C200. Uh, once again, this camera is available today for $60. All right, now let's do the outdoor boy here real quick. Uh, I didn't prep for this properly, so let's figure it out in real time. Let's not follow me here real quick. And let's shake everything all about here. I got such tight little quarters. I really need to get into the back of the house. Um, hmm. <laughs> hmm. I got so, oh man, I don't know what to do here. I, uh, I've, I've made a grave mistake. Okay, hold on. Let's full screen our OBSBOT. And then let's just deal with this. I'm going to leave it on here uh, for just a moment while I make a few quick adjustments. And then uh, we're going to take a quick, quick look outside at the product that I have highlighted in my carousel now. And that's the Eufy Security Smart Drop. The Smart Drop is pretty cool. Okay, it's pretty cool. I'll tell you why right now. Because it has a, it is a box that is designed to keep your packages safe when you have them delivered. It's kind of a deterrent for porch pirates. Now, check this out. My microphone is on the table. I'm going to be raising my voice while we go outside. Uh, and that's the fact, Jack. All right, let's pull our chips. Oh, oh, oh. Gosh darn it, I knocked over my studio light. Everything is such a tight, tight fit back here. Everything's fine. Just knocked over a couple things. All right, let's try again. Why? Because I'm trying to steal it? How do you turn it off, though? Oh, because I opened it? Enter the pin code on the address label and press open. Jeez Louise. All right, I hope you all like looking at this box today. Because everything that could go wrong literally just did. All right, let me check my chat. No new chat. Great. Okay, let's switch over our camera here real quick. All right. <laughs> this is the Eufy Security Smart Drop Box. This is the Smart Drop Security Box that is designed by Eufy. You can get this box today for $400. <laughs> and it's really cool. Because I didn't even realize that I had the alarm in it. I had this facing outside. I had this facing outside, like it faces outside. And uh, and I just spun it around very roughly, and an alarm went off. So I didn't even know that there was an alarm. If people try to pick this up. Yeah, we'll close the lid. Okay, so the lid is obviously open now. Let's close it here. Now it has a 1080p camera, as well as a two-way microphone. And it has a four-button code, but it doesn't have to be a four-digit code, but I believe it has to be up to a four-digit code in order to open the box. You can set a master pin for yourself, as well as multiple pins that would allow different delivery drivers, for example, to make those deliveries. So, like, I have a code, and that is what the delivery driver can put in to put the to put the box in. This will fit up to 90% of your packages that you need. Uh, um, this, this will fit up to 90% of your packages that you need. Okay. It has the ability to be, it has two-way voice when you use the security app. We're going to go inside because it is getting chilly. It's getting chilly outside. But there's the box. There's the box. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, box. And uh, let's do, uh, let's set up our camera again real big here. I can't believe I tripped on the lights and knocked my studio lights down while I was live. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. 
There's a two hundred dollar clickable coupon on the Dropbox Suite. I was one is four hundred bucks. Top top price is not the price for the Smart Drop, but two hundred dollars actually seems like not too bad of an option. If you are experiencing porch pirate issues, then maybe the Eufy Security Smart Drop Box might be an option for you to consider, uh, especially being fifty percent off with that two hundred dollar clickable coupon today. Um, for two hundred bucks today, what do you get? Like I was saying outside, everything was crazy. You get 1080p camera, two-way voice. You get the ability to remotely open the box. You can, using data, you can connect with the box. Now, one thing is this. Eufy said that the home, that the security, let me say that again. Eufy claimed that their smart drop security box was going to be compatible with the home base three in December, 2022. And they keep pushing that. And I, I need that. I want that. You know what I mean? Um, okay, but you can still use the Smart Drop with the Eufy app. It has a battery built into the box that uh, can stay charged for a long time. I've got mine. How long have I been talking about Smart Drop now? I've been using mine, uh, and I haven't tried to charge the battery yet. So I've been using it for many weeks, and I think that's great. You can anchor it to the cement or to your porch, uh, and it weighs about 45 pounds when there's no packages in it. Pretty great. Pretty great. I keep telling the Eufy people uh, they should just make like a solar charging panel for the smart drop. That would be pretty sweet, I think. Then you would never have to take the battery out to bring it inside to charge. Um, individual codes. It comes with a key to unlock. You can use the app to unlock it. Uh, soon to be compatible with Homebase 3. And uh, yeah, it's just a great deterrent. Now it's, it's, it's a good deterrent. It's a good deterrent. All right, like I said, then let's move on from Eufy Security Smart Drop. The box is available today for $400 with a $200 clickable coupon. When you click through the carousel and add to the cart, add it to your cart. Don't forget to click that coupon. All right, now let's drink a little bit of water and then talk about our next product, which is a, the Massage Therapy Concepts VPod Deluxe. So this is a wireless EMS and TENS unit. I got it on the table right over here. <clears throat> but uh before we uh before we bring our um v pod into the shot let's bring our other camera back into the show and let's just take a quick moment to find its center okay I'm just going to center our camera real quick and i think that's pretty pretty close give it one of these and one of these and uh that should be pretty good Pretty good. Pretty good. We can work with that. All right. Let's grab our next product, which is going to be, like I said, the Massage Therapy Concepts V-Pod Deluxe. Like I was also saying before I drank my water, the V-Pod Deluxe is a wireless TENS and EMS unit that is available today for $189, which I think initially sounded like a lot of money. For, a, for an EMS and TENS unit. But once I started looking at other options that are available on Amazon, I quickly realized that Massage Therapy Concepts is the option. Massage Therapy Concepts is the option, okay? So with the VPod Deluxe, what we get here is, oh, let's check. Okay, what we get with the VPod Deluxe here is gonna be two pods. These are the pods. They pop off the pads very easily. You get two small pads. And these are the pads, okay? These are pre-gelled electrodes uh, for your skin. They go on your skin very easily. Now, mine are getting a little bit worn. I need to replace them, but they still stick. They're kind of like fraying off at the edge a little bit. Uh, but just from my skin, the 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 pad itself, self, excuse me, the pad itself is still very much intact. So these are the small electrode pads. They're pretty big, if you ask my opinion. And, uh, okay, so you get the pads, you get two small pads, as well as one large pad. Uh, I still have my large pad seal. I've never used it. And you get two pods. This is one of the pods. Now, when you press the button on the pod, the blue light turns on. Sorry, my nose is a little itchy. <clears throat> uh, when you press the button on the V-Pod, the blue light starts flashing, indicating that your Bluetooth is on. Uh, in, in the device, and it's currently in pairing mode, seeking the app that you can download, again, for free from Google or iOS Store. And, uh, yeah, super easy to snap the pod onto the pad, and then you can take the pad, 
and put it on the area that you need treated, whether it's your arm or your belly or your back or your legs, uh, VPod's got you covered. Now, when you download that app, okay, you get 24 different options for treating pain as well as 20 different power levels for each of the 24 options. Uh, I think that's really awesome. So you get the ability to find nuance in your pain management, which I believe is very important when, if you're even considering something like this. Now, somebody in my chat recently, like or this week or early last, late last week, was saying that they have this product and that they love it. And uh, I literally have one and I love it too. The pods are easy to charge. It comes with an adapter that is a USB adapter that splits off into two mini USB adapters. So you can charge both pods at the same time. Also, when you have the, uh, when you're using the device, you can pair both of the pods to the app at the same time and treat two different areas of your body uh, at the same time if you so choose. All right. So once again, with four and a half star ratings and five reviews, the VPod Deluxe is available today for $189. All right. Now let's talk about this Tribit Home Wireless, excuse me, this Tribit Home Wireless uh, Home Speaker. Uh, we'll hold it here. We'll hold it here. The uh, the Tribit Wireless Home Speaker is available today for fifty three dollars, and that's twenty four percent off. It's traditionally seventy bucks. You can get it today for fifty three dollars. What I love about the Tribit is that it's a nice alarm clock that is very loud, and it has this unique fiber on the front of it as well as the rear that is split by this diffused piece of plastic. And this plastic is actually a light bar. And the Tribit wireless home speaker offers three different light modes. One is a manageable white light. One is a RGB chasing mode. And one is a RGB chasing mode with a strobing effect. And there's five different ways to get audio out of this device. Bluetooth. Also on the rear, you get micro SD card as well as an audio inlet. Uh, let's unhide my face here. Uh, yes, yeah, so you get micro SD card audio in as well as this port is for your FM antenna uh, and then power in here. Uh, okay, so Bluetooth, micro SD, FM, line in. Oh, and then the built-in sounds that are also uh, part of the Tribit Wireless Home experience. I like this thing. It does have a USB-C port on the front and then right behind it, behind a little gate here is a USB-A port. These are both out charging out that are pushing around five volts, two amps, five volts, three amps max. Okay. Uh, it has a really easy to read screen and the buttons are tactile. They're, they're not tactile because they don't click. Uh, they're like a touch interface. They, they, they don't click when you press them. They just respond to touch. So very, very cool. This alarm clock, like I said, is available today for $53. The Tribit home wireless upgrade of uh, Tribit home wireless home speaker is pretty loud it goes up to volume 16. i wish that in the industry i wish that in the audio industry um i wish that oh uh, bullseye squad hey what's up it's great to see you here welcome to clown live we are doing it. i saw y'all were doing it a little bit earlier you looked great i saw everybody with the be live border going around uh, your screen. I popped in for just a few quick seconds as I was setting up for my show today. So it's so nice to see you here. Thank you for popping in. Jennifer Lude. Hello. Thank you for joining me here on Clown Live. I am just wrapping up talking about the Tribit Wireless Home Speaker. We were talking about the five different ways that you can connect audio to this um, and, and about its diffused light strip in the middle that separates the fabric front and rear. Uh, I like this. And the fabric isn't loose. I always rub my fingers on the fabric to show that it's not loose and it's not. And every time I rub the fabric, I don't feel it getting any looser. I don't feel it getting any looser. Okay, so once again, as we get ready to move on to our next product, I'm sorry I didn't have this highlighted in my carousel. Uh, the Tribit Home Wireless Home Speaker is available today for $53. All right, now let's talk about, honestly, my favorite, favorite product. And I'm telling you right now, uh, this is a, this is a, 
air quotes lifesaver and probably not even air quotes lifesaver <clears throat> probably has the ability to be a literal lifesaver okay we're going to get into a very simple yet very important device right now and this is the this is it this is it this is the ef ecoflow camping light now today it's available for 68 dollars, and this is one of the most amazing flashlights uh, i've ever used in my entire life and i'm about to go bonkers about it right now okay so what's really really dope about the ef ecoflow camping light is that it has the ability to be charged via usb-c input and then on the opposite side of the device it does have a usb-a output and what's great about that is this is good to charge your cell phone now the light has five different settings on it it does have five different settings on it. And we're going to cycle through those real quick. I, I, it's arguable that it actually has six different settings on it. And we're going to talk about all of the settings right now, okay? <clears throat> and here's the first and most important one. Nobody was here at the beginning of the show. So I'll just repeat really quickly. I didn't do my show on Thursday because we had a massive ice storm. And the power was out here for 12 hours plus. It was out for longer than 12 hours in other areas where I live. Where, in my town. So I was very fortunate to only be no power for 12 hours. Now me, I'm a foolish man. I am a foolish man. I, my phone wasn't charged. I didn't have my power station. I have an EF EcoFlow River 2 power station. It was not charged. Nothing was charged. All that I had charged in the house was my EF EcoFlow camping light. And so this is where the vitally important sixth, uh, operation of the light comes into play right now here we go uh when you press the power button uh it's uh, okay power button was very simple one button design operation when we press the power button once the lights shine up the the lights shine there we go the lights shine to indicate how much battery is left currently full charge very good i charged it after the power came on the other day okay so that's it's that's its first mode telling you how much battery power is on is is remaining in the device now the battery itself is a 5200 mill is 5200 5200 not 72 7200 milliamp hour battery you get with this awesome light so i really want to focus energy on its ability to charge out and that is what is important when you press the button the first time i always just thought it told you what the battery was no it's not just that this is what activates charging the device. My phone was completely dead. I charged my phone completely with the EF EcoFlow camping light, and I still had a bunch of power left over to carry me throughout the rest of the time that I needed it when I had no power in the house. This was a lifesaver yesterday. I love my EF EcoFlow camping light just for its 7,200 milliamp hour battery and ability to charge out alone. That is an amazing feature. Uh, okay, there's a lot of things that charge out. People have speakers that charge out, you know what I'm saying? But as far as an emergency service goes or, or a device that you can use in an emergency like I had yesterday, that is a, a, absolutely amazing, okay? Okay, so anyway, enough of that. Very, very important charge out. I charged my whole phone, still could use the light. Okay, now let's get into it, okay? The light has five other modes that aren't just charging. When you press the button, it turns on. Like I said, when you press the button a second time, it's going to turn on to a very, very bright. It's not very blue. It's a pretty soft white. I can see the blue in it, but a pretty soft uh, white light that is soft yet bright. Now, for every mode that we're going to get into here on the light, understand that you can press and hold the power button. And the EF EcoFlow camping light features stepless dimming, right? So it doesn't go. It, it, it increases and decreases its brightness by pressing and holding the button uh, stepless, stepless. Okay, so we can cycle through. Oh, when you're in one mode for more than 25 seconds, then it stays in that mode. So we press it on. This is our bright white setting. It also has a nice bright yellow setting, which is very warm and inviting, you might say. It also offers a softer white light. Um, it's just a little bit softer than the bright white light. I really don't understand the difference between the two light versions personally i'll just say that but so be it uh we can't know everything okay but when we cycle through the light another time now we have a flashlight a really bright flashlight 
And uh, when we cycle through to the fifth option, we get a flashing SOS signal. The EF EcoFlow camping light is IP65 water resistant. So don't submerge this, but you could get it a couple flashes. You could get it a couple flashes. When all the uh, when all the power was out yesterday and the and the uh, and the trees were hitting the house, the EF EcoFlow camping light is the light that I grabbed to use this ultra bright flashlight. Um, to see what was going on above me, all the trees and everything. Super, super fresh. I could talk about the camping light all day. I love it so much. But we'll wrap up with just two more quick features about the light, okay? Uh, and that's this. It does have a hook. It has a hook uh, that you can hook onto things, okay? But it has two hooks, so you can make a loop, okay? So you can hook it on a loop if you need to. And finally, on the back of the camping light, you have two little neodymium magnets that hold it to a surface that you need it to be held to. I love the camping light. I could talk for 10 minutes about the light every time. I thought initially when I saw its retail value that I was like, whoa, I was like, whoa, for this? But after using it yesterday, this, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is going to charge your cell phone. Oh, and then one final, final thing, final thing here. Um, of all of the five light modes that we showed on a full charge, you get over 11 hours of use for each light mode. So that's 11 hours straight use. Um, are you wanting the camera to follow you because it is? Yes, I am because I'm moving around and I'm, it's not following me now. Yeah, I do want it to follow me when I'm in the half because I do notice that I'm moving out of the frame a little more. So, yeah, I do like it kind of following me. I've kind of been running with it for the last week or so. Uh, I think it's good because I looked over there. I noticed I was half off the screen. Uh, what's up, Travel Diva 2? Thank you for joining the chat today. It's so great to see you here on Friday's show. Uh, no power station charge? How dare you? I know, Jennifer Lude, five minutes ago, if you're still here judging me, uh, you have absolutely every right to. So I'll tell you one more quick thing, the, the story that I shared at the beginning of the show, and then we'll move on to our next product here. Yeah, I, I charge my power station, but I don't turn it off. And then in standby mode, it dies, and that's not helpful. So make sure if you do have a portable battery and it has an, uh, an off mode that you turn it off when it's not in use, uh, you know, unless you know what you're getting into a standby. So, yeah, and I'm showing it on the show and I'm just taking advantage of life and electricity. And, uh, yeah, we had the power outage. It lasted longer than I expected. And, uh, yeah, my, my River 2 was not charged. So after 12 hours of no power, I took a nap in the afternoon. And when I woke up and it was dark and I was a little bit cold, hardly at all, I went out to the car and uh, and I started the car and I plugged in the power station to the power auxiliary port in the car to charge it. And the moment that I plugged it in, all the power turned on on my block. So I ended up not having to sit in the car, which was very fortunate. The first thing I did when I came in the house was plug in the River 2. Now it's fully charged. And I think I recognize that it might be important for me to take it and like plug it in in a place and just leave it plugged in. You know what I mean? Where it's not like uh, intrusive, but easy to access in case of an emergency. I think that might be important. Mine's fully charged. You never know. Let me ask you a question, Jennifer Lude, then since you're here participating in this conversation about the uh, River 2 real quick. How long, how long do you, I, I never learned this statistic about this battery and I'm trying to learn it. Uh, once you have it fully charged, which takes less than an hour, uh, and you turn it off, how long does the charge sit in those batteries for you? How long does the charge sit in your river two after you fully charge it and then turn it off and then don't turn it on for a while? How long can it stay with its charge in it while it's not turned on? Only charge it to 80%. When you know that you're going to put it into uh, like a little storage. That was my neighbors. I don't have an EcoFlow product. Okay, I understand, Jennifer Lude. Well, uh, we don't have the River 2 in our carousel right now. But yeah, I definitely, definitely learned a valuable lesson that uh, that I learned two valuable lessons. One, always have your backup battery station charged if you have one. And two... The EF EcoFlow camping lights saved the day. It charged my phone because my phone was dead completely and I had no internet. 
So, uh, so this charged my phone and allowed me to get data so that I could contact people. And, uh, yeah, this little handheld boy, $68 today, $68 today, two weeks. You think EMB, you think two weeks, I want to look into it. Maybe I should figure it out myself. I, I should just turn mine off. See how long it goes. Uh, I think that might be a good metric to understand because I don't, I've watched a lot of videos and heard a lot and done my own research, but I just don't think that that's ever a metric that's ever been mentioned. Maybe, uh, maybe it's just something that I've overlooked every time. I'm not certain. Okay, let's move on. We're going to keep it flowing here. It's almost 630 and uh, we're going to talk about the next product in my carousel. And that's going to be the vacuum, the Eufy H30 home vac. Oh, the camping light also comes with a little kind of like felty cinch sack. And uh, here, let me show you that better. Comes with a charging cable and a little uh, cinch sack to put the camping light in. And a little instruction manual that has information about the different Kelvin ratings of the lights. If you ever want to know that, ask me and I'll tell you. But it is a fact that I never memorized. All right, now let's talk about this product here. This is going to be the uh, Eufy H30 Home Vac. Here it is in my hands. I'm holding it, and I'm showing it to you, okay? The Eufy H30 Home Vac is a, is a portable handheld vacuum. That weighs under two pounds. It's available today for $130, which is 28% off of its average retail value, $180. So save a few dollars today. Uh, when you add this to your cart, it has a power head. I'm going to turn the vacuum on right now for the demo. If you're listening. So, uh, so yeah, so here's eco mode and here's full mode. So it, it, it sucks very well. I love that the power head agitates the surface. There's no buttons to press when removing your power head. It's easy to pull off as well as attach the non-powered brush hard plastic extension which is retractable so that's really cool uh, now my dustbin has dust in it we use our our vacuum here but it's really easy to remove the dustbin by pressing this button holding it down and sliding the dustbin off and dumping it out when you do that there's a filter here that is cleanable and replaceable but uh it's great that they make it cleanable because that makes it reusable uh, okay, really easy to drop into the base, okay? Really easy to drop into the base that is weighted at the bottom and sits well good on a flat, sturdy surface. It also has the ability to be mounted to the wall with just these little brackets here that you can see. And then uh, there's no proper way to put the uh, there's no proper way to put the uh, the h thirty in the thing. It just it just whichever way. You don't have to slide it in. You can literally drop it in. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I like the H30. Mima likes it a lot. You can use it whether you're camping or in the house. We use it a lot in the house while the camper's not in use during cold weather. Uh, and uh, that's it. That's it. We're going to talk about all the rest of our products here on our carousel. And uh, yeah, so that's it for the vacuum. It sucks up dirt. It has a great heavy base that is sturdy and offers a couple of different extensions that help you clean better oh and one final thing one important thing is that it is obviously battery operated batteries easily removed by pinching the buttons that are on the side of the battery and you get up to 20 minutes of cleaning time on on full charge i think it's eco mode gives you 20 minutes and full mode gives you 12 minutes i believe easy to replace the battery just click it into place good to go all right once again the h30 it's available today for $130. And that is a deal that is 28% off of its $180 average retail value. All 
All right, what is the next product that we've got here to take a look at? Oh, it's the Centrizi and then the pillow. Okay, this one's super easy, and I've been waxing on poetically about a lot of stuff today. So we're going to blast through this one super quickly, all right? This is the Centrizi SD card reader. I like this SD card reader because – here, let's not track for a second. Okay, thank you. I like this SD card reader a lot because it has a USB connect uh, connection on one side, and then you can actually flip up the USB connection. Um, yeah, this is upway. You can flip up the USB connection to reveal a micro USB. So two wit two USBs on on the same port. I think that's really cool. And then on the other side, when we remove these tops, we have USB C to connect to phones uh, to Android phones and Lightning to connect to iPhones. Okay, let me put these little caps down and continue to show the Sun Treezy. Okay. So USB, USB-C for Android, Lightning for iPhone, and then what do you get in the middle? You get a large slot to plug in an SD card, and on the other side, you get micro SD uh, as well as a port for Lightning ad adapter. So when you have this plugged in via li a Lightning cable, you can charge your iPhone, but it doesn't charge your Android device. So you only get charging uh, natively through iPhone lightning port. Pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. So you get like more than five in one, really you get, uh, the ability and you don't need any software to use this device. You just plug it into your phone, navigate to your files on your phone, and then you can copy and paste your files to the memory card that you have plugged into this. You can unplug it from your phone and plug it directly into your computer or you can unplug it from your phone and plug it into another phone if you need to get the files onto a different device that way. I just love that this has no wires attached to it. It makes it so easy to grab data from anybody. I like to go and do things and not always do I want to wait for you to send me the picture online, right? Uh, so I, I might just bring my little device with me and grab it right off your phone if you allow me. This is an amazing device. I've had it for a couple of years. I use it uh, for content creation all the time. And it's available today. It's 21% off. Regularly, this is $19. It's available today for $15. And it has a four and a half star rating with just over 5,000 reviews. Uh, it does come in black and white. I got the white one so that it would be easier to see in contrast to my black bags. <clears throat> oh, my camera gear is black, so I thought the white would be good to stand out. All right, now let's talk about this Down Under Organic Wool Pillow. All right, here's the pillow. And then uh, this is the Australian Organic Wool Pillow. The Down Under Bedding Australian Wool Filled Pillow is designed for the perfect night's sleep. Encased in 100% organic cotton japra, uh, japara, filled with the world's best 100% organic pure Australian wool. Okay. So Australian wool fill, flame retardant, cool in summer, fully machine washable, warm in the winter time with adjustable support. And uh, this is the standard size. Now I believe in my, in my carousel, I may have the queen size highlighted. So please be aware of that uh, size difference. Okay. But this is the pillow. As soon as I got it, Mima copped it from me. So I couldn't even ever use it, but uh, she's been using it. It's really nice. And uh, that wool is easy to access. There's a zipper on the pillow here. So we'll just open up the pillow real quick. Oh, it only opens that little bit. Okay, I got you. And uh, yeah, so this is the wool that is in the pillow. Organic wool from Australian sheep and made in Canada. Uh, it's a, a typoallergenic, keeps you cool when it's cool, keeps you warm when you want it to keep you warm, and is available today for $140 for the queen size one. Okay, so this is the standard, just keeping that one in mind for you. All right, now let's talk about the Rad Love desk. Uh, let me just grab my camera and give it one of these. Okay, so this is the Rad Love Desk. I got my camera stuff like so crazy right now. I've made mistakes today. 
<laughs> I've made mistakes today trying to move camera equipment all over. My cables are getting crossed over. Okay, this is the Rad Love Desk. Let's just do this the right way. Hold on. Just do it. Anything worth doing is worth doing right, isn't it? I love banging into the other camera that I didn't want adjusted. That's pretty great. I love giving my camera tugs all over the place so that it can't be the same thing. Okay. All right. We got the camera out. Okay, cool. Okay. Boom. Okay. This is what we want. This is what we want. This is what we're looking at right here. This is the Rad Love electric desk. Right now, I've kind of got like the back third of it sort of hidden, okay, because I'm not using that area of the desk. But the Rad Love desk is 55 by 24 inches, and it comes with these two black pieces of wood. I showed you the other one, as well as the center of the desk is two pieces of brown wood. It's held together with dowels and metal brackets. It has a control here that allows you to put the desk up and down, as well as preset. Um, you can set preset heights by navigating to the height that you want and then press and holding that button to, to create the preset. When you go to its maximum down position, you can double click the down button to switch between inches and centimeters. Currently, we're looking at the inches and it travels only by half inch increments. Uh, at its lowest setting, it's 27 inches. Uh, its highest setting is, I think, 47 inches. It has a little motor here on the back. Uh, underneath excuse me that runs the legs up and down and it's on a bar that runs the other leg as well so oh it also features a little rack to put some whatever you need cable management i suppose now i don't have very good cable management rad love desk is good to support up to 176 pounds up to 176 pounds Up to 176 pounds supported by the Rad Love Desk, whether it's going up or down. I like that as well. Uh, <laughs> Scott Livestream Lab says, your cable management is 100 times better than mine. Well, okay, look. <laughs> All right, whatever. So my cable management is poor to me because uh, my Rad Love Desk is – oh, I'm stepping on my cables, of course – course my rad love desk is my workstation i just have it pushed over now for the show right but uh my my cable management is this long power bar which i affectionately refer to as excalibur uh it's full and i had to plug a pigtail into it so that i could get my lights running okay and uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to figure out what is the best cable management option so that I can permanently affix my power brick or power bar or whatever to the desk. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'd really just like to have one power cable and maybe like one Ethernet cable because I can't stream. I can't stream over Wi-Fi. Let's drink a little bit of water real quick. Yeah, I got problems streaming over Wi-Fi. Obviously, it sucks. My router's from 2009. It's not even Wi-Fi 6 certified. And uh, yeah, this is my this is my biggest, best power management system that I have. And I've been looking at other ones. And I don't have a lot of big cables, but I do want the ability to plug big uh, like transformers or whatever into the into it. And I don't want to mount it upside down because I know that the things can fall out and I don't want to have to like elastic band them in or some other solution. I want my plugs to be held in by gravity and I want it to mount to the desk so that I only have one major power cable plugged into the wall and one ethernet cable plugged in. That would be the best option for me. I have power towers plugged into power strips, plugged into power strips. That sounds dangerous. That sounds like, it sounds like a mad scientist. I guess it sounds like a mad scientist layer. Um, yeah, I try not to overload sockets and I don't think that I'm doing that with these. I'm not, I'm not pulling too much power off this thing. But yeah, I need a cleaner solution because I wheel the desk around all the time. Like right now it's in the position that it's in 
And then when the show's over, you know, we drop the desk to a more sitable height and then pull it out around in front of the couch. So uh, mine's always on the move and I'm always booting around this thing with all these plugs in it and they're, and they're getting like moderately tangled, moderately tangled. So I don't like that. That's what I'm into. That's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with the whole situation. I look at brand, I got some products. So I try to look at brands that um, I already own to see what other products they might have. <coughs> Excuse me. And Pluggable, the company Pluggable, uh, we were talking about their microscope a few moments ago. I will highlight it just real quick if you're interested. We were talking about it more than a few minutes ago. Holy, here it is. Uh, the pl Pluggable makes a lot of great stuff. They make some good video docking stations. They make this microscope. They make Bluetooth dongles. They make all kinds of stuff. And uh, under the all kinds of stuff umbrella, they make power strips. Uh, but they make like power bricks as well. And I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I think. I don't know what I think. All I know is that the the reason that I brought up the pluggable brand specifically, and I know that this is not unique to pluggable, but uh, because I have pluggable stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, it has a 25 foot cable on it. It has a 25 foot power cable on it. That would get me everywhere. That would get me all over the house if I had 25 feet on it. Um, I don't feel too, too limited here, but I only work in this area. So I just see the uh, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it type of situation. So, yeah, I need a new cable management solution. And then once I figure that out, I'll just push all the cables up and tie them into a bundle and shove them under the desk in the little grate that is included here on the Rad Love desk, which we are currently talking about, okay? Didn't mean to uh, put a long pause there and currently when I said it, but yeah, we're talking about the Rad Love electric height adjustable desk and it is available today for $204. It's 15% off when traditionally $240. So save a few bucks today if you consider getting this desk. Um, one thing that I, I bought this for aesthetic. I like the two black pieces of wood and the brown in the center. When I received it, I didn't realize that it was two pieces of brown wood. Uh, um, so whatever uh, I would want like a more solid top. Uh, but this is not, this is not, not solid. It's very solid. Uh, but I wish I had a solid top that was not so many pieces, multi-piece top. Uh, beyond that, I've been only nothing but extremely satisfied with the desk. Somebody brought something to my attention in a stream a few weeks ago that I've been thinking about, but uh, it's like it's too late for me. So maybe if this is something for you to consider, then consider the following. Um, the desk doesn't have like a bump stop, it doesn't have a bump stop. So like there's if you're hitting up or down on something, uh, if there's any tension It'll just keep going. Like you'd have to let release the button. Uh, I don't think that if I was uh, pressing a preset button and going up and there was like, if the desk was going up on a preset button and I wasn't there pressing the button and it hit something, if the desk hit something, I think it would still go up. I think it could damage the desk. Um, so that's something that I don't want to experiment with. But uh, as far as I understand, nothing is built into this desk with that ability. All right, enough about the desk. I've been loving it for a few weeks now. Let's move on to the Fantic cordless screwdriver. This is going to be the next L1 Pro. And we can really fly through this one too as we draw. How many more products do we have after this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six more products. Holy. Okay. All right, let's talk about the Fantic cordless screwdriver. This is available today for $70. It's regularly uh, 80 bucks, so 13% off on the Fantic Next L1 Pro. Let's check this out. Here, we'll push this back here. We'll pull this guy up here. Perfect. Okay, what is dope, dope, dope about the Fantic Next uh, L1 Pro cordless screwdriver is not its unique design, not its unique design, but rather its functionality. 
The functionality of the Fantic is great. It has a little digital display on it and a simple two button operation. We press the top button to cycle through this number. And this number represents different torque settings that are built into this cordless screwdriver. It ranges from one to six. And you can learn about each torque setting uh, by clicking through the carousel right now. Uh, I'd never memorize them. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, but the other button that is built into uh, this digital display is whether we're driving a screw in or pulling a screw out. Uh, I watched this thing on torque setting six, drive screws deep into two by fours. And I think this is rated for a couple thousand screws before it needs a recharge, which you can do with the USB-C port that is located here on the bottom. It has a chuck design that is, I, I, I don't know if they call it a sharp chuck, uh, but they have a special name for it. Look, when we take the bit that is in question and we put it in, magnet will pull it right down into place. And then watch the chuck. It's sitting flat now. When we push it in, it recesses. It recesses a little bit or it protrudes a little bit. And that indicates that the bit is now locked into the drill. Uh, I can't really pull it out at all. Okay, my fingers slip. And uh, to remove the bit, we just grab the chuck. To remove the bit, we just grab the chuck and push up and we can see the chuck wants to push the bit out. Very, very cool, very great. You get a few bits included with the kit and uh, some extensions. You also get a USB-C cable to charge the next L1 Pro by Fantic. Uh, I like this cordless screwdriver. I wish I had this when I was building the Rad Love desk, but it did come in super handy when I was building the uh, triple monitor arm uh, for torque settings. I put this on the lightest torque setting and then I didn't worry about my hand like over twisting and tightening the, uh, the assembly on the, on the monitor stand. Okay. Once again, the Fantic cord, the screwdriver is available today for $70. <clears throat> All right. Now let's take a look at our next product here. I love that this got added to my carousel. Because I've been sitting on this box for over a decade, okay? So I don't know if you'll get this exact box when you uh, buy it today, when you uh, consider buying today. But we're going to talk now about the Sony PS Vita. The Sony PlayStation Vita is the last handheld console that was ever officially produced by Sony. And is it's a really great console. I think mine, mine is still... Uh, Powered off. Yeah, mine's powered off right now. But this has a beautiful OLED screen. What we're taking a look at right now, very specifically in the carousel, is the Sony PS Vita. Now, these are refurbished. This one is an OG that I've had for a long time, but we're talking about PS Vita refurbs, okay? And you can get a refurbished Sony PS Vita today. You can get the PS Vita for $245. And these have four and a half star reviews from the refurb store uh, with 700 reviews now when i say the refurb store i mean that this is from the amazon refurbished store so when you click through the carousel and look for more information about these make sure that you click through the refurb store because they got a lot of crazy stuff over there but right now we're talking about this the ps vita by sony mine's got a little uh, glossy touch finger okay so now there it is okay these uh, have dual analog sticks what I love about the PS Vita, oh, you're tracking face, okay. Uh, I love that the PS Vita has dual analog sticks. It's got a D-pad and familiar four face buttons as well as left and right shoulder buttons. On the back, it is an entire touchpad. So a lot of different ways to interact with the Vita. Not only all those ways to interact, but the, touch, the, the front of the Vita is a touch screen as well. So everywhere, everywhere is input on the Vita. Uh, it has headphone out as well as ability to charge with a proprietary port. And uh, there's no physical media for the Vita. There's no old discs like PSP. There is physical media. Comes in the form of cartridges. PS Vita games are uh, not getting made anymore. So the collection for the physical copies is going up a little bit in price in places. The PS Vita has a front-facing camera. 
uh, just covering it there with my finger. It's kind of hidden behind. Uh, it's right, right between. There we go. There it is, right between the two face buttons. It also has a rear-facing camera. Now, the reason I think that we decided to put this in the carousel is uh, not only are they available to purchase right now in as-is condition. Uh, well, I wouldn't say as-is condition. I don't want to say the wrong thing about the refurb store. I'm sure that the refurbs work exceptionally well. <clears throat> but uh, uh. First gen, PS Vita, OLED screen, great saturation, all the inputs and outputs. Oh, these things got jailbroken big time. And uh, you used to have to be on a specific firmware uh, to jailbreak the PS Vita. And lots of updates got pushed out so that that firmware was like uh, old. Now you don't have to download anything and put anything into your Vita. You can just connect this to the internet and go to a web page, and it will do the jailbreak for you regardless of what firmware you're currently running officially on your Vita. That's great. When you click through the carousel today, you'll see that there's a little card that is called SD to Vita. Absolutely recommend that if you're going to go through with purchasing a PS Vita, that you plan to jailbreak it. When you click through the carousel, I absolutely recommend that you scroll down as well by uh, scroll down and also add to your cart that SD to Vita card that I was just suggesting and a micro SD card, pardon me, of uh, your size. Uh, I see people put like 512 gigabyte micro SD card and their PS Vita. They got so many Vita games, official Vita games, PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, uh, all your old emulator stuff, and a whole lot more stuff that has nothing to do with video games. You can truly unlock the potential of the PS Vita when you jailbreak it. And you can do that today for $245. I love my Vita. I love my Vita. I love that I got the original box with it. And uh, you're going to get a power cable as well. All right. Blenders, popcorns. Okay. So we got some fast stuff to push through. All right, now we're going to take a quick look here at this Ninja 1004, I believe. Yeah, this is going to be the Ninja QB 1004 blender. Okay, now uh, before I start talking about this, always the disclaimer every time. Today, we're taking a look at the blender with the chopper here, but uh, I don't have the bowl. I don't have the bowl mixer. Um, so just be wary of that. While we're talking about its $55 price point, uh, which is on sale, by the way. This is 9% off, regularly $60, bucks, $40, uh, $55 today, $55 today. But you do get the third one. So we're only going to cover the chopper and the pitcher. Don't forget you get the bull. Don't forget you get the bull. Bart, hey, what's up? It's great to see you, man. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, we're just getting ready to, like, uh, talk about the rest of the products in our carousel. We just got a few left. Oh, we got the Flowtron. Oh, he put the Flowtron in my carousel? I didn't notice that. Oh, did I put the Flowtron in my carousel and then we just cloned the show? We're going to talk about it anyway. We're going to talk about it anyway because I didn't have it on my product sheet. Let me double check my product sheet real quick before we carry on with the with the blender. It's a little quiet here, Bart. I hope that you're doing very well. I love that you come out to see me on Friday. Um, let me check my product page. I want to check my product page real quick here. Let me check some show notes. And uh, we're Friday today. Yeah, we just end at the barbecue. So they must have just, Justin must have just cloned the show because I did add the Flowtron the other day. We'll talk about the Flowtron. Uh, we'll, we'll open the product page. Okay. Well, Bart, I'm glad that you're here because we are just getting ready to start talking quickly about the Ninja Blender. This blender is a 48 ounce blender that has a 450 watt motor that is removable and reusable on other products uh, in the line, in this line, like the chopper. Let me just put this down. Let's put our chopper lid on here. And then, yeah, so we can put the, we can put the blender 
We can put the 450 watt motor on the chopper, or we can put it on the blender, or we can put it on the uh, on the uh, bowl if we have the bowl. Okay, this is a pretty much it's a blender. You know what I'm saying? Not not a lot of frills here. Just what the biggest frill to me is that one motor saves up a lot of space uh, when using these products. I don't have one motor for each one taking up precious space. All right, now we got a three blade, a three tier dual blade blender. Uh, blade okay that is included with the with the blender and it, it just drops in and sits on a little metal pin that protrudes from the bottom of the blender and then we put our top on really easy and then we put the motor on and everything slots into place with gravity and once it's held into and once it's in place and it can only go in one orientation before it will function properly then you can hit the button and bzz, bzz, make some smoothies or whatever you want with the blender. And the exact same thing applies with the chopper as well. Now, my blade is actually currently in my sink uh, getting cleaned, but it is a little dual blade, uh, dual tier four blade chopper. And the top tier of the blade is removable so that you can do a light chop on the bottom or a more aggressive chop with that four blade action. Now, one other thing about these products, these blenders and choppers, is that once you have your product done, uh, when you're like when you're done consuming it, if there's any leftover, they do come with lids that you can put on, uh, and they snap into place really easily for both uh, for all three of the options, whether it's the chopper or the blender or the bowl. So uh, that's great, right? You put the tops on, and then all three again, they feature these little rubber um, feet. They got these little rubber. Uh, padding on the bottom that holds it securely to a nice flat surface so it's not sliding all about when you're pressing the button from the top to get a fine chop. Okay, the uh, Ninja Blender is available today for $55. Don't forget that it does come with the additional bowl and that is uh, four and a half stars with uh, just under 16,000 reviews today. So definitely a high seller. All right, now let's take a look at this popcorn popping bowl and the spatulas. Always be careful when you're moving these blades around too. I've definitely tipped my finger in the past. Uh, popcorn bowl. And, oh, is it red spatulas? It's red spatulas? I thought it was black spatulas. No problem. I'll just check my product page again. It's been a spatula set. Do, do, do. No, it's the red ones. Let me grab these spatulas real quick. Okay, pop these over to the side. And let's talk about the silicone popcorn bowl. Very, very straightforward product here today. If you love making microwave popcorn at home, then you can do it uh, with this device here. The popcorn pop or excuse me, the pop the silicone popcorn microwavable bowl by Popco is an excellent choice to make popcorn at home. We pop the lid off. We take the lid off of the top of the collapsible bowl. It's all very soft silicone, okay? And then uh, do we have enough light? See these lines? I feel like you can just see them. Feel it there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If I can see them, then I know for sure you can. But they're right here. And these two lines represent your flavor fill line and your popcorn fill line. Uh, once you do that, and we just pop the bowl up. We just pop the bowl up. Boom. We got a bowl. Easy to collapse when not in use. So good at saving space. Pop this up, put our flavor in here, put our popcorn in here, put our lid, and then we pop popcorn. Then we enjoy the popcorn. You know what I'm saying? Very, very straightforward. This is available today for $11.50. It's 42% off of its uh, – oh, Evans, what's up? I'm so glad that you've been watching on Twitch. I appreciate you. Uh, I saw you in a couple other places, I think, today while I was lurking around Amazon before we started getting ready for today's live show. And uh, it's good to see you here today. Thank you so kindly for joining me on Friday's episode of Clown Live. And with your very, very loving interruption, we're going to drink some water. Nice little segue. Thanks for the water segue. <clears throat> and we're going to keep it going. 
we're going to keep it going. Evans, I hope that you're well. If you have anything that you'd love to share with me, let me know. You know, I love talking a lot and I love talking a lot about products. You know what I'm saying? So you got to catch me so that I'm not always constantly talking about products. If you have anything to say, let me know. It's Friday. It is almost 7 p.m. We're very close to the end of our carousel of products here. So, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I'm just like, I'm I'm free forming right now. And uh, yeah, I don't have, I'm just kind of like in product mode. I'm in product mode. I'm going to jump back into it. I love your thumbs up and TGIF to you as well. Do you remember watching ABC? Remember watching ABC when we were kids uh, and they would do TGIF and they would go, uh, it's Friday night and the mood is right. Going to have some fun, show you how it's done, TGIF. And then they would like cut to a premiere about what's going to happen tonight. The little cut together of like what's going to happen on Family Matters tonight. And then Step by Step starring Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Stummers. And the guy who played Cody. Do you know that guy was a real karate guy? He did karate for real. Um, and uh, remember when, do you remember when they had Perfect Strangers on TGIF? That's like, to me, that's super OG, like mid 90s, like brand new episodes of Perfect Strangers premiering on TGIF. Uh, there's two there's two memories. I have a lot of memories of Perfect Strangers, but there's two memories of Perfect Strangers that I remember. Uh, I think about them incessantly. <laughs> I think about them incessantly. Okay. And I'll tell you about what two Perfect Strangers memories I have from the show right after I wrap up uh, this popcorn. Board. Put your flavor in, put your popcorn in, microwave it, and then enjoy the flavor. Enjoy the popcorn flavor. All right, let's move on to our next product real quick, and then I'm going to talk about my two most <laughs> – I got so many perfect – all the perfect stranger memories are rushing back, but I got two that I want to talk about. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the Popco heat-resistant silicone uh, silicone spatulas, and this is what you get in this kit. You're going to get – how many do we get in this kit? Is it five? We get three, six. We got six, and I've got – so there must be another one hiding in the kitchen somewhere but yeah so we get a couple of cake spatulas as well as these kind of like concave spatulas a big one and a small one and what i refer to as the jar spatula as well as when we look at the carousel we can see that there's like another kind of like cake sort of spatula one that exists uh these are stainless steel that are coated completely in silicone so they are rigid yet soft okay so they, they are like uh they're I'm not going to bend it, but like, you know, it ain't bending. And then also it's soft. You know what I'm saying? You got me? You feel me? Okay. So the Popco, the Popco heat resistance silicone spatulas are available today for $12. And that's 16% off of a $14.21 retail value. Okay. So these are popcorn, Popco silicone tongs. My mouth is getting mush mouth from talking so much today. All right, let's leave those on the side real quick. And then what do we got? Just two. Oh, we got one product left, the Weber Smoky Joe. Okay, I'll talk about Perfect Strangers with you, Evans. And then I got to talk about the barbecue real quick. And uh, I added the Floatron, but I'll uh, like last show. This is kind of a clone of a previous show. Uh, but we'll talk about the Floatron as well. Okay, there's two scenes in Perfect Strangers that I always remember. One of them was the Halloween. It was a Halloween scene. It was a Halloween themed episode and, and it was Larry or it was Balky uh, who uh, they were flying. They were flying in the room. And I just remember, I think it was Balky. I think Balky was like the bad guy or something. And it, it, I can't remember. It could have been Larry, but I think it was Balky and he was on the wire, obviously sitcom style. And they flew him up in the, in the sky, in the room. He, they were inside and he was like possessed or like he was the bad guy or something in the Halloween themed episode. And he flew up, he flew up. That's what I remember. And then also there was another episode where, um, there was another episode where uh, Larry somehow heard that there was like a treasure in the walls of the apartment that they lived in. And Balky was so thankful to be living in America and he loved his cousin, Larry Appleton so much. He painted a big mural on the wall in the apartment. And the mural was of like Larry in America and Balky in, 
uh, Mipos. He was from Mipos. And they were like meeting in the middle. They were meeting in the middle and they were like loving each other as a family. And so anyway, Larry, the, the American cousin, he was like trying to find the treasure and he was poking all these little holes in the wall, but he never poked any of the holes into the mural. And then cousin Larry was like getting greedy with it and he was getting ready to punch holes in the mural and Balky did not want that. And he like, he threw himself in front of the mural to save it. Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> just think about that a lot. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And also I think about Balky's mother because <laughs> she would always be on the phone and she would always yell, Balky! It was really funny. Evans, I see you laughing. So you remember these things? Uh, I remember all the lyrics from the Perfect Strangers theme song. It's the best theme song. I don't know if it's the best theme song, but I knew all the lyrics uh, for that one. <laughs> I got a lot of crazy 80s uh nostalgia that is not stimulated from watching new content on the internet it's just memories made and, and that are fried in my brain forever do you remember evans uh should i drink this bottle if it's a bottle of water yeah if it's a bottle i definitely think you should drink a bottle of water i'll drink some water with you right now before we get into our last products here um, actually let's drink the water and talk about our last product and then we'll talk a little more tv real quick But Evans, uh, what about um, what about my secret identity? Obviously, you have to remember my secret identity. And then uh, Evans, here's one that you don't know. I guarantee you don't know this one, okay? And if you do, I know you'll be honest. I know you'll be honest if you if you say in the chat if you know this or not. Um, uh, the show was called Deadly Game. Deadly Games. Let me check the name. I want to tell you the right name. Yes. Okay. So, okay. Do you remember all the way back in 1995 when on over the air television, the United Paramount Network became reality became a tangible thing on on television do you remember when upn started in 1995 that's my question and uh so anyway here's the here's the show here's the show the name of the show is deadly games and it's about this guy who like makes this video game and he's like a super smart guy they got some kind of reactor or something in their apartment and then homeboy like the lead he's making this game and then the thing happens and then the reactor makes the game come into real life. And, and the guy, he programmed himself to be the hero in the game. So all the bad guys in the show like that come out of the computer game into reality, they think that he's the cold steel kid. The bad guys think that he's the cold steel kid, but he's not. And the damsel in the game is based on uh, like the ex-girlfriend or the girlfriend never had or whatever. And so that creates the conflict in the real world because she don't really care much about him, but they do get along in some sense because they do work together. I think they're exes. I think they're exes. And uh, yeah, so dude, it stars Christopher Lloyd. It stars Christopher Lloyd, who played obviously Doc Brown in Back to the Future. And he played, uh, what was his character's name in Taxi? And uh, everything else that we affectionately love Christopher Lloyd for being in. He was Judge Dredd. Uh, he was Judge Doom in Roger Rabbit. UPN, you don't remember UPN. Anyway, this game, this show was a, was a show that was so cool to me. And, uh, and yeah, and there are some episodes of it that are available to watch online. So if you have any interest in cheesy, cheap comedy sci-fi it's not like a sitcom it was more like a drama that had comedy in it i don't know it's hard for me to explain but like a sci-fi a sci-fi sci rom-com i don't know i guess there's romance because of the damsel but yeah deadly games with christopher lloyd brent spiner who played data on star trek also makes a guest appearance on the show 
and uh, and a few other notable celebrities from the late 80s and early 90s make again notable appearances as protagonists uh, excuse me as antagonists on this show deadly games it's a crazy show it's a crazy crazy show so anyway i hope that you might ever consider checking that out but going back to more traditional nostalgia like um you know, like Mr. Belvedere, you know what I'm saying? We watch Mr. Belvedere, we watch Silver Spoons, uh, we watch Mama's Family, um, Golden Girls, you know what I'm saying? The Jeffersons, Good Times, um, you know, what's happening. All those last few shows I said that like were out in the 70s were running syndication in the 80s and 90s. When I was growing up, like near Detroit on WXON TV 20 Detroit, we used to watch uh, we used to watch um, Mama's Family on Channel 20. Oh, and then uh, the guy who played the man, the man, I forget his name right now because I'm saying so much stuff. But uh, yeah, really great shows. Uh, I'm saying so much stuff. But there was another show that was like. Um, that Deadly Games show, that was like a flagship show, I believe. When when United Paramount Network, when the UPN started, I believe Deadly Games was one of the flagship shows that rolled out with the network. And another flagship show, I believe, that rolled out with the UPN was, um, was uh, a show called Homeboys from Outer Space. And uh, it starred Malcolm Jamal Warner. Who played Theo in in uh, in the Cosby Show, right? So that that was just like a really cheesy, campy kind of sitcom about two guys uh, who are homeboys. It was the the UPN network, I think, kind of like was had more of a urban. Um, when, when it first launched, it was reaching out to like a more urban audience, I guess would be the way to say it on Amazon Plus. I think I got to be careful what I say, right? So, yeah. So that's what they did. So, yeah, it was just two guys. It was just two urban guys. You know what I'm saying? And they were, and they were just doing deliveries in space. And it was homeboys from outer space on the United Paramount Network uh, in like 1995 or 1996. And there, oh man, there's so many crazy, crazy good shows that like I could wax on poetically about shows forever. But uh, before I do that, let me talk about the last physical product. And uh, let's talk about that now. <clears throat> All right. So this is the Weber Smoky Joe's uh, portable barbecue. This is a charcoal barbecue that we have in the box right now because it's smaller in the box than when assembled. And I have a couple barbecues outside, so I didn't need to unbox this one, but we do have it. So we enjoy showing it. I like showing it on the show uh, for you guys to see as well. The Smoky Joe is a 14 inch diameter barbecue charcoal barbecue that is porcelain coated and uh, does require some assembly for the handle and the legs and the grease trap and whatnot has a 10 year limited warranty and uh yeah it's just a hot it's just a big metal bowl that you put hot coal in and cook your food uh and weber tells you that with the porcelain coating with proper maintenance you can remain rust free with this uh barbecue with this barbecue uh, the Weber Smoky Joe Barbecue is available today for $57, and that's 9% off of its $62.39 retail value. And this has a four and a half star review with 15, with just under 1,600 reviews. So uh, I want to get this one, and I want to strap it to the back of the scooter, and I want to take this one like portable with me and go catch some fish and have fresh fish barbecue. Uh, right at the water. I live very close to water. All right, yo, that's the whole show. We did all the physical products today. Thank you very much, Table, for being a part of the show. Now, uh, let's talk about the last product in my carousel for real uh, because I showed it on the show last week and it is in my carousel now. So might as well talk about it real quick. Um, boom. 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 
Easy. Okay. So this is the Flotron BK 80 D 80 watt electric insect killer that covers a one and a half acre range. Uh, these are great. If you have a lot of pests, I take mine camping. Now this one, this one in particular, oh, let's, uh, let's remove this. Thank you. And let's bump this one up here. Okay. Uh, I love the bug zapper. It's great. If you got, um, if you've got bug issues, uh, these help. That one and a half acre range is a total accuracy. Uh, the bugs are just attracted to it. I take this camping and it's, it's one of those loud boys. You know what I'm saying? I got an older model. I got an old model. This is a newer model by Flotron, but I still own a Flotron product. Uh, I've got mine out in the uh, shed. I keep it out in the shed. And it looks in my mind, it looks like it's bigger than this one. But I could be incorrect. I could be incorrect. So what is the difference between mine and this one is that this one has plastic guards on the exterior while mine has metal guards on the front. These bug zappers are phenomenal. Like I've seen a lot of bug zappers and all are with their merits. But I love how this one has that big ring on the top and, uh, and a solid body. Uh, we put this out in the back of the yard and I, I'm a weirdo, I guess, because like I live in a, uh, as you people that watch consistently are aware, I'm uh, here. Let's, uh, let's uh, stop sharing now. The Flotron is available today for $70 and it's 18% off of its $85 MSRP. If you're looking for a big bug zapper, I know there's a lot of options. I think that the Flotron is a really, really great option. Uh, if you're so inclined, if you're so inclined to get a bug zapper, I got to pull out my big one and we will, when the weather's nice, oh, man, every time I talk about going outside, I get so excited, but, uh, yeah, anyway, that's it for products. We're all done with products. If you need a great bug zapper, I absolutely encourage you to consider Flotron products. They've got a, a, a couple different ones to, uh, to, uh, to peruse in uh, their store. So click through the carousel today to learn more information about Flowtron. Oh, Christy Ferrari, Hong Kong. What's up? I don't have a, I don't have a thing. I don't have a, a sound effect for a honk because uh, nobody honks me. Nobody honks me. So great to see you, Alex. Thank you for popping out. We, Alex, are just wrapping up the product section of the show, which generally indicates the end of the show. But uh, I was also talking about a lot of old television shows. And I was talking about um, uh, how I love Perfect Strangers. Do you know that show? Um, do you know Perfect Strangers? Let me know. What, what is one of your favorite shows that was like before we had all digital media and we had to wait for the show to come on television on Thursday night or whatever? You know what I mean? And then run to the bathroom for the commercial break. You know, when we actually wanted the commercials on the shows so we could go take, it's on! And then you would come running out of the room and just flip over the couch so that you can enjoy the show. Um, I don't think I do. Well, you didn't enjoy television when you were younger. That's uh, That sounds insane to me. That sounds insane to me. I watched a lot of television. I watched probably enough for the both of us, Alex, so it's not really a big concern. But yeah, there are some great, great shows from way back in the day. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of like more obscure shows, but we were talking about how the ABC television network used to show TGIF every night, uh, every Friday night. And uh, those blocks were crazy. Like when it was, when it was family matters and um, step by step and, and, uh, and perfect strangers and, I, I'm having a hard time remembering what the fourth one was, but they were always changing that block of TV of, I love TGIF. Uh, did they ever do TGIF on America's funniest home videos? No, right. America's funniest home videos on ABC was never a part of the TGIF lineup of shows. Was it? I don't think that it was. And remember when Bob Saget was the host of uh, American uh, America's Funniest Videos, America's Funniest Home Videos, um, and then at the same time for a competition, they gave Dave Coulier and, and this woman who I remember having blonde hair, 
Uh, they gave Dave and this blonde woman a show. It was America's Funniest People. And Dave Coulier would always go, <laughs> cut it out. It's ridiculous. Dave Coulier is crazy. Does anime count like Dragon Ball? Yeah, Dragon Ball is... Uh, Dragon Ball... Here's the only thing that I know about Dragon Ball. And maybe you'll know what I'm talking about. But I really... I, I never really got into the show. Okay, so there's the big pink guy, right? And I believe his name is Boo, right? Um, and he was one day... He seemed like an innocent character. Because he was like a big fat guy that was like innocent seeming. But I know that Boo had a big rage as well, and that's what his power was, right? I believe so. But in the episodes that I was watching uh, of Dragon Ball, this this big, fat, pink character, Boo, he was going with this other guy. And I don't remember what his name was, but he was, uh, he was white-skinned, and he had dark black hair, and he wasn't young like the – like Vegeta or whatever the other guy's names are. He was an older guy and he had a big, thick black mustache and he was being a jerk off to Boo and I didn't like it. And then I think uh, Boo ended up getting his uh, come up. And I think the old guy got his come up. And he wasn't old though. He was like a middle-aged guy. He had all black hair. He had no white hair and he was being really mean to him. Yeah, imagine Boo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the episode, the guy was being really mean to him. I didn't like that. <laughs> and he had no reason to be mean to him. It was a long, 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 long time ago that I saw that, but it is the only clear memory of Dragon Ball Z that I have. Uh, yeah, anime counts. Anime counts. Um, I guess in the 90s, because I watched a lot of syndicated television, I never really... I never really took the I never had the ability at my age to appreciate Pokemon. So I never got into it. I know you love God. I know everybody on Amazon loves it so much. And when you guys start doing it, I just feel like I'm sitting in the corner. I'm sitting in the corner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you guys are having such a great time, I, I have a hard time to relate. But it, I'm, I'm confident Yu-Gi-Oh is anime, even though it's probably not like high standard anime like i know there's super hardcore anime stuff but uh i watched a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh on syndicated television oh man do you remember chippendale's rescue rangers animated show that was pretty good do you remember the live action tv show harry and the hendersons when it was like it was the sitcom and they were always hiding they were always hiding harry from company and stuff Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes, or Harry and the Hendersons? Yes. Let me know which one is yes. Uh, the Harry and the Hendersons one is crazy. Uh, I remember the Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff a little bit. Um, well, I'll show you Chippendale. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Chippendale's great. Uh, did you end up watching? I'm gonna go grab a box out of my bedroom. Don't leave. I want to show you specifically what I like when it comes to cards. Okay, I want to share something with you and uh. Um, Chippendale. Oh, did you watch the new Chippendale movie? The Chippendale, the new Chippendale movie was really, really good. I liked it because it had like a lot of like adult, uh, humor in it. That was like PG rated kind of humor, uh, and a lot of great throwbacks to old nostalgia stuff while also being mixed in with an appropriate amount of new age uh, animation. I really enjoyed that new Chippendale. The plot wasn't the greatest plot or whatever, but uh, the movie overall was very good. I want to show you some cards. Show you these cards too, I guess. <clears throat> uh, you can't buy this on Amazon, so we're just talking about fun stuff now. Oh, I don't, I grabbed a sealed box. I grabbed a sealed box, but this is, I like the clown stuff, and this is what I like in St. Clown Posse, and it's rap music based out of Detroit, but they've done so much in their career that they've made games and stuff as well, and that's what this is. This is Into the Echo Side, and it's a really cool deck building game, so you have the board, and then it comes with a fixed amount of cards, 
Uh, you don't buy like Pokemon cards to expand your deck or Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Everything that you get, everything that you need comes in this box. You know what I'm saying? And uh, all of these cards are all uh, hand drawn by a man named Tom Wood, who in my in in this community, my Juggalo Insane Clown Posse community, is a well respected artist, a very well respected. And so he did all the artwork for all of this. And uh, this is a deck building game. So you get dealt like some starter cards and they're not worth any points. And then we get to take turns. And, you know, we as we play, we add cards to our deck. We can remove cards and we can stop people from having effects uh, that could damage us while we're playing and whatnot. Um, it's not like hit points, though. It's not hit points. Uh, it's just collecting points for valuable cards. And then at the end of the game, we add up the value of the cards. and. Um, and then, you know, high, highest highest score wins. When it comes to this game, I want to say a couple more quick things to you. Um, when it comes to this game, I was obsessed with this game a few years ago. And I and the people that made it, they put on a tournament. And I joined that tournament. And I played the singles. I played the singles game. And, uh, and for singles, I didn't do so good. Unfortunately, I didn't do very good in singles. I played the tournament all weekend, and I came pretty close to getting into the finals through the singles tournament. Unfortunately, I did not. However, I did make it into the finals tournament uh, in teams, in teams. Me and my boy, uh, we played obsessively. So we went in and we we did it. We did it. I was going to use some different words. Uh, we did it. We, we, we did great. So because we each won... Uh, because we won the team's tournament together, each of us earned a place in the finals. And I beat my boy out in the finals. And I was top two in the master's tournament. And in the end, while well, there was some speculation of some funny business, I came in second place. I came in second place. Three huge days of gaming. And I came in second place at the Into the Echo Side tournament. That was ultra cool. The winners, The winners for that got to play against the uh, the winners for the team tournament got to pl play the game against the two creators of the game. Uh, that was pretty phenomenal. I don't think we won the game against the creators, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure it was close. Yeah, really great. Let me show you one more thing, and then we're gonna get ready to end today's show. Okay. Uh, well, two things. Two things. I never watched Yo MTV Raps, but I got a bunch of Yo MTV Raps cards. Uh, I won them. I won these in a giveaway in a Juggalo thing. I won these in a mystery box of Juggalo stuff. So they've just been sitting around. Okay, just one final thing, okay? Um, this is uh, this is the Into the Echo Side Oracle of the Three Rings expansion. And this is the only expansion that ever, ever came out for Into the Echo Side. So you get the main deck with, oh, sorry. So you get the main deck with the board and then you get the expansion. The expansion gives some amended rules as well as a whole new deck of cards uh, and a few other things. We'll not get into it. But there's one thing that I do want to show you, and this is why I got all the cards, okay? I want to show you this. I wish I never would have opened this. I wish I never would have opened this box. This box sealed right now, 300 bucks. Easy, easy 300 bucks. I could probably get a couple hundred for the sealed box, but I'm never going to sell this because it's the only one that I have. And I'm showing you why right now, right now. Here we go. Are you watching? Are you watching? Okay, look at this. This is the amended instruction manual. This is the amended instruction booklet that comes with the expansion. And when you open it and you go to the very back page, okay, under test players, under test players, here's me. Right above my finger. Blake, not Slim One, Marshan. That's me. That's me. I got invited by the creator of the game, who is the brother of the rapper, okay? The brother of this man. This man's name is Violent J. And his brother, Jump Steady, invited me to the building where they recorded all of the music that has heavily influenced my entire life to be who I am today. All this clown stuff wouldn't be without these men, these these few, a couple of these guys. And and I walked up to him at a, at a concert and I'm like, hey, I like your game a lot. And I got some ideas if you want to hear them. And we started talking ideas and he gave me like 30 minutes of his time 
he didn't have to do that. He's a busy guy running a concert. And uh, he gave me 30 minutes of his time. And we just talked. And there was nobody else. Nobody else bothered us. And I knew I had to shoot my shot right then and there. So I'm like, well, his name's Jump Steady. His name is Rob. I'm like, well, you know, Rob, if you ever want to get beat at your own game, let me know. I'd love to I'd love to show you how to play sometime. And uh, and he thought that that was really funny. And we exchanged contacts. And he reached out to me. And he's like, hey, if you want to come by the, the place, like Psychopathic Records, and test play this expansion with us you can bring a homie with you and uh that would be cool that would be cool and that honestly like <laughs> i'm lit right now like that was one of the biggest highlights of me being i've done a lot of crazy stuff with the music and everything but that one is one that hits really super close to home uh in my heart as being an indelible memory for all this clown stuff i love this one a lot i'm really glad that i got the opportunity to share that with you today and um can you still find a game of it around there? You can, if if you were super interested in, in owning this game, um, I think maybe you can buy Echo Side, but the expansion, no. And then if Echo Side, no, I know people. I know people. So if you're interested in learning more about this game, and this game is, um, uh, you know what, I can't even speculate because I forget because I don't play any other games. Um but this is based off another like card game that exists. It's just like a deck building game. So uh, I wish I knew that other one. I think it starts with a letter V, but I can't recall. I can't recall. Yeah, this is really important to me. And it makes me really happy that I could take time on the show today to share this with you because, uh, yeah, I got my name in an instruction book. Thousands of, well, I don't know if thousands of people have this book, but uh, enough, enough do, enough do. And then look at this. I got uh I got extra cards. This card you could only get in Colorado um, in 2018. You could only get this card for two days in 2018 in Colorado. You got it by buying this expansion. And so my homie got me that. And then I got the other expansion for buying uh, the, uh, the game at the festival. So these are the only other official expansions. Uh, and this is only four cards. This is only four cards. The, uh, the other expansion comes with a whole deck. And and one final, final, final thing, because I'm so, so excited, and then we are going to end the show here, I promise, is that uh, because I came in first place in the, in the team's tournament, in this game, there are epic cards. And I got the whole epic cards. I got all my epic cards uh, with foil backs, right? These are all just like, paper cards, you know, that don't have any like shine or anything on them. So to have an, ex an ultra rare set of foil back epics, that's amazing. Now they're not in here. They're in a more special secure area in the bedroom with all the other stuff. But yeah, uh, that's it, I guess, from me. I didn't expect to go off on that tangent. But when we started talking about card games and Yu-Gi-Oh games and anime. And I'm trying to relate with you. I think you're super cool, Alex. So I, uh, that's cool. Is it worth money? The, uh, well, yeah, this card, I would say, I would say that the expansion open is probably worth around maybe 200 bucks. And then, and then, uh, this card, uh, this kit, this set is maybe worth 20 or 30 bucks. It's only three cards. But this card that you could only get in Colorado for like one day in 2018, I, I could have sold one of these cards for $200 the other day. But because the guy was my actual real friend, I gave it to him for $80. I gave him the card for $80. I was sitting on two of these $200 cards for uh, several years. Mine's still in the plastic. I don't play with it. He's like, I'm going to play with mine. I'm like, you're a dummy. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, but uh, he does what he wants to do. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy that the card could go to somebody that I care about. Because what was I doing with it? Sitting on it? Whatever. I'll make more money from other cards later. Okay, so then now, with all of that, Alex, thank you so much for letting me talk to you about something that I really, really like, and uh, I, uh, 
I keep it. It'll only appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. This will only appreciate. I can see this whole kit going for at least six or seven hundred dollars in a couple years. And I got a couple of these. I got a couple of the box base game still sealed. This one's sealed. I got two or three more that are sealed in my bedroom. And I have my open copy that I occasionally play. I've never played this, but I did open it so that I could see my name in print in the book. And I don't regret that. Well, at the same time, I regret that. I wish I would have kept this one sealed. But uh, yeah, that's it. You're welcome for uh, me sharing. I, I was really happy to do that. Okay, it's 7.30. We are over time. We are done here today. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here on Clown Live. Make sure that if you're one of the seven people watching the show, if you're not following Alex, make sure you're following Alex on, uh, is it the Christy Ferrari channel? Yes, absolutely. If you feel compelled, please put your link in the chat. You're always more than welcome to advertise yourself here, Alex. I love that you came and joined me today. And everybody else that joined me, Evans earlier, and Amazon customer, as well as uh, um, uh, Livestream Labs and Travel Diva and Jennifer Lude, Ian B, and of course, Rover every day. I appreciate everybody for coming out here and hanging out with me. We will be back on Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with an all new episode of Clown Live. And stay tuned for a potential pop-up episode tomorrow or Sunday. I think I'm going to do a show on the weekend. I just haven't decided what day yet. So definitely I'm going to come back on Saturday or Sunday at 5 p.m. with another show for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until the next time we get to hang out with each other, whoop, whoop, much clown love.